our bilateral relations between Kenya and South Africa are cordial. The relationship at a higher level is, is such in a good manner that uh, Kenya and South Africa together would be great leaders on the continent if they continue the way they are continuing right now. Kenya and South Africa have enjoyed bilateral relations spanning 30 years now. But did you know that there are still feelings of inequality be between these two countries? Yes, today we sit down to just discuss that. Hello and welcome to Globe Traction. My name is Pasil Telewa. Today on the show we host the South African High Commissioner to Kenya, Mr. Johannes Matlangu, who shares with us so much more including the MOUs and the bilateral relations that have been able to be signed between these federal countries. I hope you enjoy Mr. Matlangu's story. In the heart of Nairobi, where diverse cultures converge, we find an extraordinary diplomat whose journey has spanned decades of struggle, negotiation and nation building. Meet Mninwa Johannes Mahlangu, the South African High Commissioner to Kenya, a man whose life story is interwoven with the tapestry of his country's history. Born on the 8th of October 1952, Mnino Mahlangu emerged as a pivotal figure during the turbulent days of apartheid. In the face of adversity, he took on numerous roles that would shape the future of his nation. A teacher by profession, Mr. Mahlangu's passion for education fueled his desire for change. His journey began in the late 1960s when he was elected president of the student Christian movement in the eastern Transvaal. But it was his involvement in politics in the 1970s and 1980s that would solidify his place in history. Mnino Mahlangu's influence extended to the highest levels of political negotiation. As a negotiator at the Congress of Democratic South Africa and the Multi-Party Negotiation Forum, he helped pave the way for the birth of a democratic South Africa in the early 1990s. Beyond his borders, Mahlangu's commitment to diplomacy shone brightly. He represented South Africa in numerous international conferences and seminars, sharing his insights on governance, intergovernmental relations and the harmonization of laws across Africa. But Mr. Mahlangu's influence isn't confined to the political sphere. He is deeply rooted in his community, serving on the school governing body of Steelcrest High School and contributing to the Paul Nthimunye Bursary Fund, providing opportunities for education at both high school and tertiary levels. Today, Mnino Johannes Mahlangu continues his diplomatic journey as the South African High Commissioner to Kenya. In his role, he breaches cultures, strengthens ties, and embodies the ideas of unity and collaboration. From a student leader in the midst of struggle to a seasoned diplomat fostering international partnerships, Mnino Johannes Mehlangu's story reflects the resilience and determination that have shaped modern South Africa. Join us as we delve into the remarkable life of Mnino Mahlangu, a beacon of change and diplomacy in a dynamic world. Mr. High Commissioner, yes. thank you so much for creating uh, time you. to be on the show today. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Thank you very Please much. introduce yourself. My name is Mnino Johannes Mahlangu, High Commissioner of South Africa in Kenya. For how long have you been Commissioner of South Africa to Kenya? I arrived here February 2021. Yes, this is but my third year. Third year. How are you finding Kenya? Kenya is a wonderful country. Uh, I like it very much, particularly the places that I've been. Uh, two things that has kept, have captured me. Nairobi is one of the most beautiful cities on the continent. It's one of those cities. Yes. Excellent. 
and look at the greenery all over the year, whether it's summer, winter, it's just like the same. But another thing that captured me very perfectly is the humbleness of the people uh, in Kenya. All over where I go, you find the people are very humble and uh, most welcoming, awesome people. So the food, very nice food, almost similar to the food that we eat in South Africa. What is that food that you really like? Well, the greens that I like very much, Nyama Choma, Nyama Choma. Uh, very nice and uh, so we, we enjoy the food as if we are in South Africa. Music is one of the things that is exhorting here. Do you love to dance? Yeah, not that much but yeah. I do try my best. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, my, my feet are not, I mean my legs are not cooperating that much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, do, you are not too old to dance. Anyone nah, can nah, do it. Nah, nah, nah. Have I'm you not... visited our local places to nah. enjoy some dance, some music? Yes, uh -huh. yes. Tell me, have you been to the National Park, the Nairobi National Park? Yes, I've been Oh, there. great. Yes. Our relationship between these two countries has uh, now spanned 30 years officially, if I'm not wrong. What do you find quite interesting between these two countries? Well, our bilateral relations between Kenya and South Africa are cordial. And uh, we have been, since uh, I came here, we've been even making them very stronger. The relationship at a higher level is, is such in a good manner that uh, Kenya and South Africa together would be great leaders on the continent if they continue the way they are continuing right now. The relationship has been concretized at a high level uh, diplomatically. Uh, you would remember that uh, 2021, yeah. my minister has been uh, visited Kenya on a working visit and uh, he relaunched what we call the JCC, JCC, yes, yes Joint Commission and Cooperation, mm -hmm. and um, 2022, my minister came back for the midterm review for the JCC. Now, that means when it's JCC, we sign a certain agreements with the both countries yes. where we'll cooperate and work together. The bilateral agreements. Bilateral agreements. Yes. So the bilaterals that we signed uh, are plus minus 28, if that's a correct figure, and uh, we are working on that. The mid-term review took place last year. You would remember that my president also visited Kenya during the memorial In service. In 2022, last 2022, year. 2022, last yeah. year, yeah. during the memorial service of the late President Kibaki. Yes. And uh, he, my president also visited Kenya on a working visit in Kenya in November last year where President Ruto and President Ramaphosa also signed some extra memorandums of understanding. One of those uh, memorandum of understanding which unlocked even the, uh, the greatest relation for us was the opening of free visa, 90 days free visa travel to South Africa which when I came here was a big problem for Kenyans. Yes, and that's what I, I had when I came and they were crying to me all the time and saying, hi commissioner, can you please talk to South Africa? And after that, my president then visited Kenya and he made this announcement. It was an outstanding announcement. I think many Kenyans are very proud about it wherever I go whether it be a function in meetings, they still talk about. The 90-day free visa, yeah. does it have any limitation? Is there something people yes, need to understand? Yes, it does have limitation. Yeah. That's why yeah. it's called 90-day visit. In yes. other words... So can you go a number of times? Is yes. it a multiple visa? Quite correct. You right. can go um, uh, uh, at least 90 days in a year. 90 days Let in a year. Yeah. You cannot go for 90 days at once. Then you, you finish for the year, then uh, people have got to understand that, that you can go and visit or say, whether, if it's a medical, medical visit, 
it will consider the doctors, of course, will say through their certificate that they need some extra days for this patient to be in South Africa. What about if it's a student visit? The student, same. Uh, they go, remember, students go for study and they come back and they renew again their visit to go back to South Africa and we assist them at the mission so they continue like that. So, High so Commissioner, could, if the, I'm getting you right, yeah. if I were to go for a four-year course, yeah. bachelor's course, for instance, as yeah. a student in South Africa, yeah. does that mean I'll always be coming back after 90 days elapses? How is that going to work? Or well, am I going to take a student visa? Normally the visa? students do come back home to come and visit and go back again. But if you live in South Africa and you want to stay there mm -hmm. for a term of four years, then you've got to renew your visa uh, any time when you, you're still in South Africa so that they could know that you're still there. If you don't renew it, what will happen then? Uh, they will say, no, you have overstayed in the country. Uh, then they will uh, uh, sort of uh, mark you as a person who's not supposed to be in the country. Mark you as a person who is not supposed to be there. Yeah. Yeah. T tell me as a Kenyan, if I'm interested to be a South African citizen, what is the legal way that I can do that? Well, there is a legal way that you do like all other countries. You've got to put an application. Uh, there's a form that you fill up legally that you want to be a South African citizen. And uh, you can, all Kenyans can do it here with us at the mission. And uh, we then facilitate that application in South Africa to our headquarters, the Department of Home Affairs, and they will look at that and they will say, the information is quite correct, this is all what we need, the IDs are correct, that's not a criminal, that's a person who wants to come and stay in South Africa, and they will approve of it. So are there they, ways? If of, they don't approve yeah. of it, they okay. will then say, that they don't approve of it. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for that clarification. There is what we call, you know, the trade relations between these two countries. And I understand South Africa is a member of SACU and Kenya is a member of ESC. Mm. I don't know how when it comes to administrative barriers, because the last time I checked, there were still administrative barriers because these two countries belong to two different, you know, uh, parties, but Kenya being a member of ESC and South Africa being a member of SACU, there has been, you know, issues and other, you know, related charges that come with that. Perhaps you could talk to me about that. Well, that's at the technical level. Yeah. That's what they deal with. But all what I can say is that different uh, uh, com uh, regional communities work in a different way. So what is going to happen right now because of the African continental free trade, the ministers of trade all over the continent yes. are meeting together to look at all those barriers that are there in terms of the regional communities, whether it could be SADC, whether it could be East African community, whether it could be Western uh, community, whatever. You would remember that from the 29th to the 31st of May, all trade, 54 trade of ministers yeah. had a conference here yes, they in did. Kenya to look on the issues that you are talking about at the technical level. So that's purely a technical issue that the free continental trade agreement is now going to ease those uh, working relationship between the RECs. I'd like to know what these two countries have been able to achieve together and most importantly the Nairobi office you know, working with the government of Kenya. How has been your experience so far? Well, they, 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 they're achieving a lot of things on a daily basis. Amongst, for an example, the trade agreements that we have signed, uh, those that I remember currently right now is the issue of the 90-day visa that I've mentioned. Yes. The second one is the issue of the school of government. They've already done a full, uh, uh, what you call uh, the full university courses with the two government the training? schools. Yeah. Training, yes. yes. And at a more senior level, that your director general, your PS, principal secretaries, cabinet ministers, 
the last one, the modules, they call them modules. So the, they go and study that in South Africa? They went in South Africa for the first time, wow. the first model, and the second model was done here in Mombasa, and I went to officiate that. So that is, is, is being implemented. And uh, the other uh, thing that uh, is being implemented currently is the uh, border control issue between the two countries because it's important that we should control our borders and the flow of migration and so on. That's being implemented and there are a number of them. That's just to give you an example on uh, the, the, the achievements that the two countries are, are working on. Every year we partner then, the High Commission here in Kenya partner with the United Nations to work for the 67 minutes. Uh, that symbolizes the 67 years that Mandela has been dedicating his life for the struggle for freedom. So today we've been here celebrating this day together with the United Nations planting 67 trees. Now these 67 trees means that we will be able, on the other hand, to fight poverty, which is one of the values that Mandela has been speaking about all along, that's to fight poverty. Remember the topic for this year is uh, food security, solidarity, and climate change, those things. So we have focused today on food security when we're planting these trees, because when these trees, the avocado trees can live 60 years in life. They live long and uh, they stand against drought. That's another thing. And they can give you up to 300 kg uh, of avocados of per annum. And that means you can feed a lot of children. In these schools, children will not become hungry. So what on top of what they eat, the food uh, project that they've got, uh, feeding skin that they have on daily basis will add to those uh, avocados to eat in their food as well, which is a very healthy food, by the way, avocado, with very healthy nutrients. And uh, so that is a legacy that the children will never forget. I'm very interested, particularly as a Kenyan, to find out are there any opportunities that Kenyans can participate from in South Africa? Any opportunities for Kenyans? Of course, there are great opportunities Name between them. the two countries. Name them. Let's talk about cultural issues. Yes. For an example, take the Ken I've listened Kenyans in every function I've went to. I mean, you find excellent voices. Music, it's one thing that brings people together. You take the artists from South Africa. If you put those artists in Kenya and South Africa together, you can imagine what they will do. They will blow the whole continent. The whole world. The whole world, yeah. actually. Yeah. It's so interesting. I've had wonderful voices. Take the wonderful voices in South Africa. Remember what the, 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 the ambassador of Africa used to do Maria Makeba yes. on the continent. Yes. Now, if you just organize culturally those art artists and put them together, not just in music, drama, performance, um, uh, uh, sculptures work, which is very great here in Kenya and very great, great in South Africa, they can do an enormous work. The second thing that you want to mention, maybe, and we can talk to, it's a question of sports. I mean, Kenyans are very good athletes. You get very good athletes in South Africa. You put them together, and they work together in, in sharing ideas and, you know, training together, improving each other. Sports, athletes, football, or you, we call it soccer in South Africa, I'm told you also have a very good team here. The national, your national team, they are still building it, but it's a very good national team. Yeah, we didn't make it to and the you, World Cup. You've got rugby, yeah. yes, we're all struggling, but if we come together between Kenya and South Africa in sports, on all the spheres 
of sports, we can do miracles. And Growing up, did you have ambitions to be a diplomat, for instance? Not at all. I never <laughs> even thought about it. Very interesting, I thought, to be a preacher. Look at you uh, now. <laughs> I wanted to be a pastor in yeah. the church, uh -huh. uh, though I still do a little bit of my preaching when I get time. Yes. But, uh, Which I church? I may just turn up this I'm, Sunday. Uh, Assemblies of God. Oh, great. Yes. I'm Which side? Is it within here? Yes, they've got it here as well. Oh, great. Also, so I'm going to visit. They've got it in South Africa as well. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, looking at where you've come from up to here, what advice would you give to upcoming diplomats, upcoming leaders? Because today is basically a leadership day. Yeah. If we are celebrating Mandela, we are celebrating people that have created impact within the community. What advice would you have? Well, my advice is a very simple one. Be humble. Become as possible in any difficult situation as ambassadors, you must become and apply your mind very seriously on the issues that are before you. Uh, because if you don't do that, you will be angry on nothing and you will lose the focus at your work. So you must remain calm and you must remain focused and they must, as a diplomat, you promote your foreign diplomacy and also be able to engage with the government in which you are accredited to. And the second thing, as one of the values of Mandela, as an ambassador or as a high commissioner in any country, you always consider things very carefully and you get in touch with the people of that country in a diplomatic manner, not in a haphazard manner, but uh, do the things that diplomatically, as you are called a diplomat, so you must always project that diplomatic stature in everything that you are doing. What keeps you going, Mr. High Commissioner? Well, it's when every day when I wake up and I look at this African continent, I become more motivated that we can make it better. We can make it a, a better continent to live in and so long as we can move and breathe, it's our job to assist our people on the continent. We look at the continent that is richer than other continent so that people of the world can also envy us and say Africa is our home as well. Not always all of us looking forward to uh, the other countries of the globe and, uh, but they must envy us that we, can, we are the continent that is envied to live in with great tourist, with, uh, I mean tourist uh, uh, places, a continent with great minerals, a continent with great people of humility, a great people of leadership, great people with skills on the continent. That keeps me going. When I look at these children, yes. I remember I was like this. And I want to think how can we make them to be grown-up leaders that will take us forward. Because as I said in my speech, everything is in your hands now. Madiba has done his job and he passed the patent to us. I'm passing the patent to the young people. But I've got to leave that legacy also of showing the correct way of taking Africa uh, on top of the map. Long live Madiba. Long live the spirit of Madiba. I hope you learned a few things from the show today, including but not limited to how you can become a South African citizen. Many thanks for watching Globe Traction and join us again every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Kenyan time only on KTA News. If you have a story you'd like to share with us, don't hesitate. Write to us through Globetraction at standardmedia.co.ke or DM us on our social media platforms at Globetraction or at KTA News KE. You can also follow me on my social media platforms at Pasil Telewa on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for more of behind the scenes stories. But until then, I hope to catch up with you again soon. Bye-bye for now.